Welcome back to Sound 101. I am Andrew from Deity Microphones, and he is Deity Steve. What's up? Which means this is a mailbag. So with the mailbags, the first question we answer, that person who asked it wins a V-Lov. Today's V-Lov goes to Alex Banaskovitz. Yes, it does. Alex B? Because he did one thing, and that is simple. He dropped the words hashtag mailbag at the beginning of his question, so we knew exactly where to go find it down in the comment section below of our past videos. So the question from Alex for you, Andrew, is... Friends, hey... What about the moment when we know that there is music in a given scene that will only be added in editing? On the set, the director often asks to play music live for the actors to maintain energy, the same movements to the rhythm of the music. This is probably like a dance scene at a club or something. Yeah. Uh, what do you recommend in such situations? So we actually did a whole episode about audio playback on a film set and how they're actually able to do all this. So let's take actually a very good scene like this in the social network where you see the club and everyone and they're trying to have that conversation and they're yelling at each other and they're having the yell because in theory, there's music blaring everywhere right so it's a really good immersive sound design in the social network the way they achieve it is a thump track so what you do is you create a 40 hertz tone that you then create little beats to it like little boop 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 kind of deals right real simple little beats you match the bpm of the thump track to the music you plan on using later in the film so here's where it really comes down to though a lot of pre-planning so if you're going to do this and you're going to provide this service for a director or producer or whatever, right? Or you are a director or producer that wants this in your movie, you got to pick the music first because otherwise your BPM is going to be completely off. It's also a safe bet that whatever you choose, the editor is going to end up swapping something out at the end anyway. So just pick 120. Good dance, kind of a rhythm. Why not? But on your location, you're going to hear this thumping on these subs, right? You're gonna get a sub speaker, not a traditional speaker. You're gonna get a sub. Your microphone, well, they claim to always pick up at 20 hertz. They don't always do it evenly as it would be the middle part. Often there's a little bit of a roll off on the very tail end of the microphone hertz. Plus you will add a low cut filter when you're doing your location recording anyway, which is gonna make that 40 hertz even lower in your recording. Then in post, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add a notch filter. Remember when we did the Big Giant Master EQ episode? No, you don't. Well, there's a card up here. You can go visit that after this episode. Okay, you're going to cut narrow, boost wide, right? So we're gonna cut just a sliver out that's at that 40 hertz. That way we don't cut into the dialogue. The same technique also works in music videos where you're trying to get everyone to single up and dance and you may have one of those weird awkward scenes in the middle of a music video where the music kind of fades out and then all of a sudden the singer or rapper or whoever starts to talk and have one of those narrative kind of music videos. So that's how it's done. Incredible. Yeah. Now, Steve, I've got a question for you. Shoot. Here it goes. Mailbag question. See, very searchable. Uses the word mailbag. That's how you get on these episodes. Regarding sound blankets, is it worth paying for something like a producer's choice blankets? Or we'll say two moving blankets eh, back to back do virtually just as good of a job. I think we can speak extensively on this or at least convincingly on this because we just did an episode of a DIY vocal booth in which we used just moving blankets to create sort of a uh, sound deadened environment. Not sound isolated, but it deadened the sound pretty well. Reverb knocked out. Exactly. So honestly, I would say the moving blankets are a better bet. Also a much better value. You could probably get what, twice as many moving blankets for the same price as some professional grade uh, sound blanket? Yeah. And for most of your uses, it's gonna be just as good. And with twice as many blankets, you can do a lot. In one of our earlier episodes, we did an entire situation where we had to deaden this very, very bright room. Oh, it was an echo chamber. It was tough. And with four or five blankets kind of just hung up in uh, C stands across the room, we were able to really knock down that reverb and echo. So honestly, I think uh, you're better off with moving blankets. Just get a few more and uh, you'll be set. Now, when you say get a few moving blankets, are you talking about like the $5 ones at Harbor Freight? Or are you talking about a nice moving blanket? A nice moving blanket, medium tier. I believe the ones we bought were closer to $20 each, but they were nice. They were a little more heavy duty and they were grommeted, so made hanging much easier. If you have a question about these moving blankets, we will drop a link down in the description below for you guys. Definitely. Yeah. So you got another question? Naturally, I do. Darren Gendron asks, 
How can you mount a handheld recorder such as the Zoom H4n on yourself in such a way to free up both your hands and to visually monitor levels? Hashtag mailbag. It's pretty simple. You're just going to spend money. And that is you're going to go out and buy the Zoom Handy Recorder Bag. Now, it's like a kind of a, a pouch. The recorder sits in it. There's a, like a necklace you can wear it around or you can clip it to like a fanny pack kind of deal, like a big heavy duty kind of tool belt. Both are great options. The caveat, though, is visually monitor uh, the levels. It hangs flat against your body. I don't know of a solution out there that lets you actually do it this way so that you can visually see the screen. You mean it's like kind a of a Iron awkward. Man suit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ooh, 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 like Google Glass. Yeah. Yeah. Be... Okay, I've got some ideas after this. Okay, like some okay. AR kind of things that go up. We'll talk later. That said, someone used one of those video kind of shoulder mount devices that like clamps to your body and it has like this little arm that comes out to a quarter 20. They mounted the zoom recorder to that. So it like stuck out right in front of them like this. You could do that. I think it's like $50 to buy one of those. You may look ridiculous on set. Yeah, you definitely will. But, and I've seen some people comment and they're like, this is the dumbest idea ever. Yeah, but like you come up with a better idea. Like that's still pretty ingenious. If you got to see the meters and it's not ergonomically designed for it, what else are you going to do? So there's that. You could definitely do one of those. You're going to look silly, but you're going to get the job done. So it's good enough. Good enough. Uh, we could uh, on this channel probably put together some kind of DIY audio bag and show you guys what we would do. Uh, if you want to see a DIY audio bag video, Drop it down in the comment section below, or if this video gets like 200 likes, uh, we'll do that for you guys. That's my suggestion. You can look goofy and do it, but it's gonna get the job done. So up to you. Got one question for you now, and that is, what is the preferred audio level for room tone or ambient sounds while mixing a short film? And I don't think short film is really all that important here. I think it's for all video production. I would agree. And this is a tricky question because I think it's very easy to overthink. Uh, naturally, at least I would think that you're recording something quiet, so you want to crank your game. Right. You want to hear everything. Right. But it's a bit counterintuitive in this case because the true answer is you want to have your gain settings at exactly what they were when you were recording dialogue because you don't want to have this like, you know, hyper loud, like blaring silence. The purpose of room tone is going to be using uh, in post-production as sort of a band aid to fill these gaps. So you want the silence to sound exactly what the silence sounded like in the dialogue takes. Mm -hmm. So it would be strange if it was like you and I talking with like a little hum in the background and then in the, the spikes in between the air conditioners like roars Macro. up. Yeah. You know, you got this ASMR air conditioner. Yes. And it's true that you could adjust the gain levels in post, but that's extra work. And I think the sound profile would probably be a bit different if you're recording it gain cranked super hot than if you left it pretty low. Yeah, so because now you got the self noise of the microphone, the self noise of the circuitry also at play. Right. And maybe now you're picking up the sprinkler outside or something that wasn't even registering at the proper gain level. So the short and simple answer is the exact same gain settings that you had when you were recording dialogue. Well, that does it. That wraps up another episode of Mailbag. If you want to be a part of the Mailbag, you got to go right now before the video is over because then it's going to switch over to the next video. You got to write down that comment that says hashtag Mailbag so we can come down there and find it and pull it for the next video that we're doing where we answer your questions. If you like this kind of content, you got to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be the first one in the list so you can drop that comment where it says first, you got to hit that bell for notifications because that's the only way you're going to know when we go live every single week. I am Andrew from DD Microphones, and he is still DD Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, if you guys like this kind of content, over here on my right-hand side, that's actually my left-hand side. I don't know which way you're watching your phone, but we're going to put that episode up there all about sound blankets and how to get the most use out of your sound blanket. It's an older video, so I guarantee you, you've probably never seen it, but it's really critical because we take an echoey environment and we make it actually usable for a short film. So go check it out right now. Stop watching this. Click on the button. We also use the wrong white balance. Yeah, it's an orange.